Yo, what's happening guys? I'm gonna do a video here on this uh, 2006 CBR 600 double R that I picked up on Craigslist. This was a track bike that I'm uh, redoing for the streets. Gone ahead and put in the headlights and the turn signals and all that stuff. Um, one thing that I noticed when I picked up the bike was uh, this sub harness had been kind of clipped through because it was a track bike, you know, it came with some uh, shark skin uh, fairings and uh, you know, like I said, no headlights or anything. So when I saw that this sub harness was clipped, I didn't really think much of it. I thought, okay, you know, the guy got rid of a bunch of shit up in the front. So, you know, that makes sense. Once I got it back to uh, my house, I noticed that this little wire here led to the ECM. And I was thinking, huh, that's weird. I, I better look into, into that, what, what this particular wire is for. And it turns out that it's the FI indicator light. Uh, so that was a big scare because I thought uh, anyone that's uh, familiar with bikes, an F FI light can be a very serious thing. So uh, I went ahead and uh, popped off the seat and uh, located the service uh, connector wire here, which is this four pin little terminal. Uh, what I did to read out the codes because mine weren't coming out on the dash. I have an aftermarket kickstand and the switch is not plugged in. If yours is stock from the factory and you've got an FI light, when your kickstand is down and your ignition is set to on with your kill switch set to run, it should pop on. FI. Um, long story short, uh, if, you, if yours isn't flashing on the dash and you wanna manually take it out like I did, uh, you'll try to uh, locate this service wire connector and uh, you're gonna wanna jump this green wire to this brown wire. I can't get it to zoom in. There we go. Good Lord. So those top two. If the clip, you see the notch there? If it's faced right, it should be the top two terminals. You can get a paper clip, fold it over and shove it in there. Uh, make sure the kickstand's down. Like I said, set this to on. Uh, set the kill switch to run, and it should start flashing. Long flashes are 10, and the short flashes are 1. So if you got three long flashes and five short flashes, that's going to be code 35. Long story short, I got a bunch of codes uh, that got spit out to me. Uh, there was four codes, one uh, for each of the primary uh, fuel injectors, one for the O2 sensor, and there was a couple more. I wanna say the air temperature, uh, the air temperature sensor, and a bunch of other stuff. But what I'm gonna be focusing on here is uh, for the O2 sensor delete. Uh, I cleared all the codes except for the O2 sensor, okay? So everything's good, but uh, it's only spitting out one. I forgot what the code is, but uh, long story sh short is, um, you know, I lifted, I took off the fairings, I lifted the tank, and I found this little natural four pin connector or clear connector uh, down in there, uh, not plugged into anything. So I looked it up and sure enough, that was the O2 sensor. Uh, for anyone who has a aftermarket full exhaust uh, like this, um, this is a ti titanium uh, Leo Vince SBK uh, exhaust. Down here, you'll see that the catalytic, uh, catalytic converter is uh, deleted and there's no O2 sensor uh, replaced in this aftermarket one. So the code that I'm getting is that this O2 sensor is not plugged in. Uh, and the reason for that is because I have a power commander. These O2 sensors will monitor the exhaust coming out of the tailpipe 
and see whether it's running rich or it's running lean. And it will uh, tell the ECM to make necessary adjustments to the fuel air ratio so your bike uh, performs better. Since the aftermarket uh, power commander is already doing that, that's why the previous owner did not uh, plug this back in or you know install a new one where that lug nut is on this aftermarket uh, because we got an aftermarket piece already doing that. Long story short, if you do not install a new O2 sensor, you will get a FI light on the dash. And it's really annoying because, you know, number one, you know nothing's wrong with your bike. But number two, if something is wrong with your bike, you're not going to know about it unless you're regularly pulling out the codes manually just to, to double check. So what I want to do is get rid of that FI code once and for all. So, you know, if something were to happen to my bike out there on the road and it's it's a serious problem then that FI, fi light will pop on and you know tell me to pull over so the way to get rid of it is uh to purchase some of these i went on amazon and these are uh i don't even know much about it so i'm gonna have to read this 330 ohm resistors one quarter watt five percent uh so this is a a resistor uh and they look like this there's a little tiny wire with a little like coil thing in the middle so what this will do is basically uh jump these two wires with the same frequency that the stock uh, or the same wattage or ohms, whatever the hell the, the measurement is, it's going to kick back to the ECU that everything is good and dandy. So, um, once I, so I've already plugged it in, go ahead and turn it on. You can see here, it's no longer on. The dash is completely clear. Now, if I remove this, I haven't tried this yet. Yep, there we go. Pops back on. So all you got to do is, is uh, get one of those ohm resistors. I folded it over so it was a little bit thicker in the terminals. So we wouldn't lose connection. Uh, and I just shoved it right down in there. And what I'm going to do uh, to cap it off is use some of that electrical tape just so nothing gets in there but i uh, hope this help, uh, helps you guys and uh, if you guys have any other questions on a cbr 600 double r uh, i'm going to be putting out a bunch of different videos like i i redid the ignition coil spark plugs uh replaced the air uh filter the oil and so on and so forth so um stay tuned if you guys got a 600 uh double r